Hi guys, welcome back to another real-time tutorial video. Today I am bringing you my eagle eye study. There's roughly two and a half hours of real-time footage that you're going to be working through. I've also supplied the line art, the reference writer, which is actually from Pixabay, and a full list of colours and everything that you're going to need to complete this. Make sure you click the link in the description below to go and find that and do your line art and everything first. Then come back here and follow along with the tutorial. I will split this into two parts. You have the first part today and the second part will be released tomorrow for you guys. I really hope that you enjoy this one and make sure that you share your finished images with me over on Instagram. Make sure you tag my page Amy Howard Art and you can also join my Facebook group as well by using the link in the description below and you can post and share your work with almost 3,000 other people in that group there as well. But let's get straight into this. Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today's tutorial we're going to be drawing an eagle eye. So before, previously I have created a tutorial on both our eyes of an owl, but I thought that we would spend a little bit of time on a single eye study from an eagle. And this not only incorporates an eye, but it also incorporates white feathers, which I know a lot of you have been asking for tutorials of. So I thought we would kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So let's dive straight into the supplies list and everything we're going to need to complete this. So we'll start with the color list. So these are mainly polychromized pencils with a couple of luminance pencils. The first ones that I have here are warm grey one, we've got cold grey one, sky blue, dark sepia, warm grey six, earth green, bista, Prussian blue, juniper green, green gold, naples yellow, and walnut brown. And we've got three luminance colours here. Those are olive brown 10%, silver grey, and light cobalt blue and the final polychromous pencil we have is manganese violet so it's quite a small supplies list in terms of colored pencil other supplies that i will be using i have my criticolor eraser just to get rid of the graphite outline i've also got a white pencil which i'm going to be using for blending and burnishing purposes I have a drawing broom to get rid of all of the eraser residue, any pencil dust that might build up or any kind of like waxiness. This is going to help to sweep that away so we don't end up having those little blobs of wax redrawn into our drawing. You guys know what I'm on about. I also have a Tombow mono eraser. This is the rectangular tipped one just to erase some of the smaller areas that the larger eraser can't quite get to. The paper that I'm using is the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper, £140 in extra white and the size of this drawing is, f well, the paper is 4 inches by 4 inches but the actual probably completed size will be three and a half inches by three and a half inches because I have used a little bit of scotch magic tape around the outer edges so that we have a nice clean border around there. You don't have to add scotch magic tape around the outside um, to have clean edges you can go right up to the edge of the paper just make sure that you put something underneath your paper if you want to keep your workspace nice and clean but I like these precise edges because then it looks good when framed. In terms of sharpeners and that kind of thing, I am just using my Swordfish pencil sharpener here. It's just a mechanical one. I also have the Faber-Castell Trio Pot um, sharpener thing for just pointing up any leads and things like that. I also have my um, sand, sanding block to just resharpen pencils. And that is pretty much it. I don't have any blender or anything like that to hand. I'm going to try and keep this one free of any blender and just use the white pencils 
um, and the pencils themselves to do the blending for me. If you want to use a solvent blender or any kind of blending implement then feel absolutely free to do that. What I suggest people always do is that if you are using a liquid blender or anything, when I go in and blend with my white pencil, that is when I suggest that you use whatever kind of blending method you absolutely want to use. You don't have to complete this and use the methods that I'm using. If you find solvent blending a lot easier for your hand, your wrist, or if you just find that you like the results better, then feel free to go ahead and use that solvent blender. If you are unsure on how to use a solvent blender or the blending and burnishing with the white pencil, if you go back to some of my previous tutorials or if you are watching this in the um, separate download, then there are a few videos on YouTube. But if not, there are some on the website and Patreon for you guys if you want to recap on any kind of techniques to use. So, that's enough waffling about the materials and everything. Let's get straight into this. So what we're going to concentrate on first is the actual eye. We're going to work on getting this glassy effect within the eye and then work on the feathers surrounding. The most difficult part of this is probably going to be this section just here because it's that kind of mottled, really short, stubby feather kind of texture. So that's probably going to be the most difficult part and this little bit around the sort of cornice of the eye there. Let's get straight into this and the first thing we're going to do is actually start on the pupil. So we're going to start on that dark part. And to start that dark part off we're not going to go in with any warm grey one or anything like that. We're going to go in with some sky blue. We're going to layer this down first. We're going to get rid of the graphite there. are not going to get rid of it completely. You just want to eliminate a little bit of the harsh sort of darkness of that graphite just so that it doesn't peek through when you're layering the lighter colours around the outside. So we're just going to take the sky blue and you're just going to shade it using some circular motions. I've got quite a short pencil here but with a longer pencil you'd hold it quite far back. But I'm holding mine quite close to the tip because it's a small pencil but I'm holding it on the side like this to limit the pressure that I'm actually putting through that pencil. And I'm just going around the highlight section. So there's this little triangle that's taken out of the pupil here where you've got that highlight. So I'm just going around that and then just going over and creating a nice even layer with the sky blue. And you want to keep the pressure really light when you're doing this and you just want to layer and build it up. You don't want to go in with a hard pressure. So just really, really light circular motions, building it up. It's so got a nice solid colour like that one there. Then we're going to take some walnut brown. And we're also going to use some of the Prussian Blue and then we're also going to use some of the Dark Sepia. So we're going to use them in this order. So we're going to use Walnut Brown and you're just going to do exactly the same thing as what we did with that Sky Blue. So we're just going to make small circular motions. You can go in a few different directions, move your hand around the page so that you get maximum coverage on the paper. So again I'm just holding this one onto the side and quite far down because this is quite a short pencil. If you're using a pencil sort of this size then what you would do is hold it quite far back like this and then you'd make those circular motions and the reason that you do that is just to limit the amount of pressure that you put through the tip of the pencil. When you hold your pencil 
far to the point like this, you're able to apply a lot of pressure and usually when you are trying to layer lightly you end up with an inconsistent pressure when you're holding it this close. So I always recommend to people that they hold it sort of midway towards the end but not right close like this. Otherwise you're going to get inconsistent pressure or even if you think that you're using a light pressure sometimes it can be quite hard on the actual paper. So even with this one I can hold it quite far back and still make these circular motions. What you do have to be careful with though is that you are incredibly gentle around um, small areas so when you are using your pencil like in this gap here it's quite easy especially when you're holding it quite far back to lose your grip slightly and then just come outside the lines so you want to just make sure that you are really precise really gentle just take your time and fill that in so you don't want to rush any of your work at all just going around that highlight so we've got like a pac-man style pupil going on at the moment and then with a couple layers of that down then we're going to start to add the Prussian blue in exactly the same motion and the reason that we're building up blues and browns is because it creates a really nice interesting dark tone so instead of the pupil looking flat with just layers of grey and dark sepia we're building in these tones so that we give the pupil some depth make it look really nice and rich adding colours underneath dark sepia and dark colours makes them really come to life so this is the reason why we're adding walnut brown or why we added the sky blue and then walnut brown over the top and then another blue just mixing those colours together just gives a really interesting nice dark tone like that so you can see it's sort of almost looking like a dark sepia I'm just switching up the motion of the pencil, switching from circular motions to just doing some cross hatching, so going and shading in one direction and then going over in another direction just to try and get a really nice even tone and a nice even coverage across the paper. And same in that small section, going one direction and then going in a slightly different direction. Just ensures that you can get right into the valleys of the paper. Once that's done, we're going to go over once more with some Walnut Brown. Again with that circular motion or going back and forth, sort of cross hatching. And you can see that we're building up a really nice, smooth area of the pupils. Really nice and blended out. There's quite a few layers down in this one small section. like so. Then we're going to take the dark sepia and my dark sepia is quite small I, um, I need to order some more dark sepia pencils this is the last one that I have so I have a really really tiny one and this is where you want to apply a little bit more pressure through your pencil to really get those dark spaces so once we finish with this layer we're not really going to add too many layers back on top so you can go ahead and add a little bit of pressure to really smooth things out and create your dark areas. So you want to pay attention to the reference photo and you want to see where the really dark areas within the pupil are because even though it is all dark you've got some lighter like reflections and you've got some really dark areas. So the really dark area that is most noticeable is in this top corner here. So you just want to go in with a little bit of pressure really darken that up and also around the very outer edge of the pupil you've got a really crisp dark outline so you just want to go around the very outer edge add that in, make it really nice and crisp and then shade in, in any of the other dark areas and you want to pay attention to the shapes that everything's making there, okay So you've got some of those dark areas in place. I'm going to take the white pencil and I'm just going to apply a tiny little bit over the top just to bring out some of those little highlighted bits. So I'm just using the point of the pencil, it's quite sharp. And you can see that it's coming out quite 
nice and bright on top of the dark area here. So I'm just applying a tiny little bit of pressure just to get that down and then just using that circular motion just to shade in this little light bit here and that really makes these darker areas pop a bit more as well. So directly on top of some of that white here I'm just going to layer some of that Prussian blue so we get that nice blue tone showing through and it creates a really nice sort of highlighted effect. So that is pretty much it for the pupil. We will come back and refine it once we have done a bit of work within the actual eye itself. So the next thing we're going to do is just work on the dark outer edge. But before we do that dark outer edge, we've got some really, really light highlights within this section of the eye. So I'm just going to erase those, get rid of the graphite. And what I'm going to do is use that white pencil and make it really nice and sharp. And I'm just going to point that down onto the paper and it's going to create a wax resist. So when we do work our coloured pencil over this, the coloured pencil hopefully shouldn't stick to this area. So we want to use quite a hard pressure. You don't want to make that hard a pressure that you actually break the tip of your pencil. But you just want to push hard enough that you actually add a nice solid layer down and almost indent the paper. So you're kind of using this like an embossing tool but you're just putting down this layer of white. So there's a little bit on top of this highlight here which we're just adding in here. And there's a little bit off to this side here which we just want to add in there as well. And those are the two main really really light points that I want to make sure that we add in first. Now I'm going to take the dark sepia I'm just going to gently add in the very outer edge of the eye here. So you've got this really dark ring around the iris and that's what we're going to add in now. So you just want to use a really light pressure and you just want to gently shade it in to begin with. You don't want to go in with a hard pressure. You just want to go around really softly and get the general shape of the eye first. So I'm going directly over the graphite as well. So instead of going right over this highlighted area, I'm just going to go round it. So follow the graphite, follow the shape of this dark area up here. So I'm just filling in the dark area. And then once I'm happy with the shape of the eye, then I can go in and just darken up some of these edges. So I apologise if my hand gets in the way, but I just need to hold my pencil upright because it's quite small. And just really go in with a bit of a harder pressure and really define this line here. I'm just going in with the harder pressure here as well. I'm going in with the hard pressure here because I'm happy with the shape and it's quite dark so it doesn't really need too many layers on top of this. I might add a little bit of walnut brown or something like that, just shade. 
On this side, however, we do need to add a little bit of blue. What we're going to do here is just go through with the Prussian blue, add this as a layer on top of that lightly shaded dark sepia there. We're also going to add some walnut brown. We're going to do the same down here, so I need to just shade a little bit of the dark sepia just down here. Like that. I'm just going to take the Prussian blue, add it down. I'm also going to add some sky blue as well for a little bit of different blue tone. The Prussian blue is a bit more of like a greeny blue, whereas the sky blue is a bit more of uh, a yellowy blue. So I'm just going to take this, shade that down. Using a fairly hard pressure here just to try and get the the tone down. As I said, there's not going to be too many layers added here, so you can afford to go in with a bit of a hard pressure if you're confident with how you want this area to look. So if you've got the shape and everything in correctly of all these dark areas, then you can just go in with a little bit of a harder pressure. So I'm going to add a little bit of walnut brown down as well. Like we did within the pupil, I'm just going to add this pretty much all over, apart from where you've got these really blue parts. Also going to use a tiny bit of the manganese violet because there's a little bit of a violet tone in these areas here. So I'm just adding a little tiny bit of this down as well into these dark areas. Blending it with that blue is going to create a really nice purpley blue tone, like a blue violet. And then I'm just going to go in with the dark sepia and really darken it up like we did with the people. So just paying attention to the really, really dark areas. Like so. Now what we're going to do is fill in the iris. So we're going to fill in this iris colour. To start that down, we're going to add some warm grey one. And I'm also just going to really lightly get rid of this graphite just here. Just lightly. We're going to fill the whole area of this with the warm grey one. And you're just going to make large circular motions. Be careful to not go into the pupil because otherwise you're going to drag that dark colour into this lighter area. And the actual eye of the bird is quite light so we don't want to muddy it too much. So just be careful when you are shading, just try and avoid going directly over that and the same with around the outer edges as well. Just make sure that you don't drag too much dark colour into the light area. Gonna go into that bit of the highlight there, like so. Then we're gonna take the earth green and we're also going to use a little bit of the olive brown 10%. And we're gonna use the white to do some blending and we're also gonna use a tiny little bit of the sky blue. So these are the main four colours that we're going to use for the iris. We're going to use some of the walnut brown for some shading around the top along with some bista and some other tones. But these are the main four for the actual colour of the iris. We're going to layer down some of the earth green first. I'm just going to give my pencil a quick sharpen. 
And I'm just going to layer really, really lightly. So I'm holding my pencil like in the middle here to limit the pressure. And I'm just shading back and forth, creating a slight circular motion, not too much though, mainly just going back and forth. And just adding this color down. So I'm gonna avoid the highlight area. Just go around that area. So now our eye has a very, very slight tint of colour. I'm just going to add another layer over, but going in the opposite direction. Again, this is just to help fill as much of the tooth of the paper as possible. And you get a slightly darker tone by going over with another layer as well. You want to make sure that your pressure is nice and even on your pencil, so you get a really nice, consistent, even tone all the way across. You don't want to end up with any streaky patches or some darker patches and lighter patches. If that happens, then just work on your lighter patches to darken them up to the same colour as where you went a little bit heavy, maybe. With those layers down, I'm just going to add a very, very light layer of the olive brown 10%, doing exactly the same thing, so just shading. It's going to give it a bit more of a yellow hue and then we're going to blend with the white pencil because then there'll be enough layers down to actually do a little bit of blending and that will mute the colours a little bit more. So once that's down, just going to go over using exactly the same pressure as what we just used with our previous pencils with this white pencil. Just because you are blending doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go in and use a heavy hand. You'll find that a couple layers of the white will actually blend everything together really nicely. Or if you're using a solvent, then you just want to go in with a nice heavy layer of, or juicy layer of solvent. And blend everything out. So I'm just using a light pressure, just going over and over. going in a few different directions as well. There we go. So now we can work on adding a little bit of texture and a little bit of a darker tone. To do the darker tone, we're just gonna go in with some more earth green. And we're gonna just add a little tiny bit of a darker tone around this side of the pupil. So we're just gonna go in with light pressure on the pencil and just doing some shading and some circular motions to apply a little bit of a darker tone just here. So you don't want to increase the pressure or anything, you want to keep that really nice, nice light consistent pressure. And when you see a little bit of like a flaky waxy build up when uh, you get a few like pencil crumbs or something like that then you want to use your little brush because if you work over those and work them back into the drawing you end up with a really big waxy um, smudge and you can end up smudging all the way through your work and you end up just with it looking a little bit muddy so you just want to brush those away. I'm just going to work on adding in some of the darker areas around the very outer edge of the iris. There's not too many dark edges around here, so where the light is hitting the eye, the darker edges are up here behind the highlight here. So I'm going to just add a further layer of the earth green up here. I'm also going to grab out that sky blue and we're going to do the same, just add a little bit of sky blue here and there for a little bit of like reflection. So we're going to use the sky blue and go around the pupil 
which is where you've got a little bit of light reflected. So I'm using a broad circular motion and a light pressure. As I was saying in the beginning, because my pencils are quite short on these ones, I can't really hold them quite far back, so I'm just using them on the side. So that's a good tip to actually use up your pencils. If you're struggling with maintaining the pressure, just turn your pencil to the side and you'll limit the amount of pressure if you need to use a light pressure. So got a little bit of a blue highlight here. Just filling in this bit through here as well with a little bit of blue. Then what we're going to do is just take that white pencil and just gently blend. We need to build up some of the shadows up the top there. So we're going to take our walnut brown and we're going to lay out really, really lightly to get a darker tone up here. So this is where the main shadow on the eye is. I'm just going to work around that little highlight. And directly next to that highlight you do have a bit of a darker edge. So we're just going to edge that highlight gently with the tip of the pencil. Get a really sort of a prominent line there and then just use the tip of the pencil just to blend everything and create this dark shadow. So just use a light pressure and work back over areas where you think that they need a little bit more working and a little bit more darkening. So you can see the shadow already forming up here and everything's starting to look a little bit more spherical. So I'm just going to concentrate on this section on this side. I might even introduce a little bit of the warm grey 6 into here, just using a really light pressure. Just going around the edges and just adding in any shadow where necessary. And I'm going to use the white pencil just to blend it and smooth it out. So I'm going to use the Warm Grey 6. I'm going to give mine a quick sharpen because it's a brand new pencil and a nice sharp point. And I'm just going to fill in some of the darker shadows and just bring a little bit of texture from the outer edges here. So there's some like small triangles which protrude into the iris from the outer edge so I'm just using a light light hand and the tip of the pencil to create these small triangles and then just blending them out into the dark area and I'm just going around the outer edge down here and creating a little bit of shadow
I'm going to use some of the Prussian blue as well just to help that shadow along. And then down the bottom here you've got tiny, tiny little details, just little rectangles and triangles and lines and I'm just going to create that texture just by creating little tiny shapes along the edge here. Not necessarily following the reference 100% for this, just creating a really nice subtle texture, really subtle shadows and everything within the eye. Blending them out into the surrounding area just by lifting the pressure off my pencil a little bit more and creating really large circles. And then to help those shadows, I'm going in with that blue just really, really lightly. This bit up here needs a tiny little bit more brown. Where we've blended it out with the white, it's sort of washed it out a little bit. So I'm just going in and reintroducing a little bit more of the brown tone. Creating a few lines to create that texture. And just darkening up around this pupil. Darkening up the outer edge lines as well, making them really nice and crisp. So just using the point of the warm grey 6 to create this texture. Filling in all of the details and adding in all of these dark marks. I'm adding a tiny, tiny little bit of the manganese violet into this shadow up here. It's just going to enhance those green tones within the eye. And just using that warm grey 6, a little bit of the sky blue to create a little bit of a little highlighted area. I'm just going to use the warm grey 6 to add in all of the details. So going around that highlight here once more and just darkening up around it to make it really nice and prominent. Going over with some of the Prussian blue as well for that blue tone. We're going to add the highlight within the eye in a second as well. So a little bit of texture, just creating some sort of zigzag, almost circular kind of lines circles, little bits coming off like this,
So into this highlight, what we need to do is just add a little bit of the sky blue. So we're going to add the sky blue to finish off the circular area of the pupil here. Like so. And then for the area on the other side of the blue, I'm just going to really lightly go in and use some of the warm grey 6. And I'm going to blend that with... The white pencil so both areas just going to blend with the white pencil so that blue highlight within the pupil I'm going to add another layer of the sky blue and then start to add some of the Prussian blue and we're going to add some dark sepia as well you just want to follow the shapes. You've got a dark, uh, dark inner, inner section and then around the outside of that little highlight area you've got some lighter areas which is what's going to stay sort of sky blue. So you just want to use the point of the pencil to get in there and do that. You can use the white pencil to really pronounce the edges and just add a little layer of sky blue over the top. I'm also going to just add a tiny little bit of the manganese violet into where we've added that Prussian blue to create a blue violet tone. And then overlay that with some dark sepia. To create a dark edge, just to follow on from the people there. And then this side of the highlight there's a dark bit just going around this highlight there and then it's just shaded with some of the warm grey 6. I'm also going to add some of the sky blue down there as well. Just a tiny little bit of the earth green. And there we go. So that's pretty much our eye done there. We need to just fill in this back part, which is going to be exactly the same process and sort of layering as what we did within the eye here. So I'm just going to go around the very outer edge. This time I'm going to use some walnut brown though, because it's not quite as dark as the dark sepia. So I'm just going to edge this with the walnut brown. And I'm going to go straight in there with a layer of the warm grey one. And take the earth green and just add this all over as well. Then we're just going to take the dark sepia and the walnut brown and the warm grey 6 and we're just going to shade and continue this dark area here. So just want to really pay attention to your reference photo, pay attention to the shapes that it's showing you and add those down. Gonna add a tiny bit of the green gold as well. And then just blend out some of this blue tone.
using the warm grey six. like so. So this front section here we're just going to complete the eye now by just adding this in. This is just going to be added with the first layer of the, is this the olive, olive brown 10%. So we're going to create a yellow tone. And then just fill it with some walnut brown shade it it's quite dark so I'm just going to shade it pretty much all the way down There we go. So that's pretty much, pretty much there. I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So now we can begin the outside edge. So this yellow outer, it's quite shaded with some of the browns. So it's not going to be like a really bright yellow. It's not going to be the same kind of yellow as this little section of the beak wherever that is did i include the beak i can't remember whether i drew the beak in or not there's a tiny little bit of beak here so it's not going to be like that really intense yellow like that it's going to be quite muted with some browns so that's going to be our next part to complete so that's pretty much it for part one of this eagle eye study real-time tutorial for you guys here on youtube make sure you hit subscribe and you tick that bell notification if you haven't done so already so that you can be notified as soon as part two is released tomorrow and i'll see you guys later bye